Hi, I'm Denise Godney, and I'm here to give you a quick tour of musicplayonline.com. When you first come, go to the login page as an educator and then register, and it'll give you a 15-day free trial, and you'll have a chance to try all the wonderful resources on this website. When you first go to the website, I suggest going to the dashboard first thing and click on student code. It'll say generate my code. And once you've done that, every time you create a link to send to your students, to send to a substitute, or you make a QR code for your students, it will automatically embed the student link and all they have to, it'll automatically embed the student code. All the students have to do is click access some fun and they're right into it. So on this Discover page, we have an introduction to each of the grade levels. I'm going to look at grade two, and we have um, an overview, the year plan, month outline, scope and sequence, what we will learn. So the what we will learn posters are for your bulletin boards. So you have a quick visual for students and parents of what you're going to teach in the year. These are all the elements of music. These are the national standards. The month outlines, I recommend that you download and print because when you've got them, it's very, very helpful. Um, it, the first part will tell you what's in the song list for that week and then what's in the lesson module or the learning modules over here. The song list doesn't officially start until September because there's people who start in August week one or two or three, or four, or not until after Labor Day. So song list officially starts after Labor Day, but there's lots of great lessons for August that use either June songs from the previous year or new materials that are on the site. Um, I'm including a John Jacobson song in August in each of the grade levels. Here's additional options. And there's a wealth of materials on this website. You can go into Toolbox and Compose, go into Games and Play Games. You can go into Units and there's creating activities for many different things, um, lots of different units. So back to the Discover page. I was in grade two and we looked at the overview. Here's the assessments for grade two. I love this tracking chart. It's got lots of checklists and rubrics for all the concepts that you'll teach. Here's an editable version of it. Classified indexes and links in case you just want an overview of the whole year. Here's highlights. Here is the national standards. And we have I can statement posters for every grade level. We've taken the complex sounding national standards and made them into kid-friendly um, statements. And the national standards are very good. It's a really good way to search concepts for any grade level. If I go into grade two and I go down to where the national standards talks about concepts, um, the national standard says, listen to, sing, perform, and respond to music concepts, such as pulse and melodic contour. That's very limited. And so what we've done is expanded to all the, the concepts that we feel should be added in grade two. And then we have the correlations to where they are in music play. So you can download that, you can search a PDF. So we also have substitute plans. This is information for subs on how they can use the learning modules. And then these are offline um, sub activities, blank templates, lesson module overviews. If I go into the lesson plans area, I can download a week outline for every week of the school year. These are also available in the music play binders. They're, they're not binders anymore. They're actually beautiful coiled books and they, um, contain all of the week outlines that you can download from the site. The, the binders, I'm going to keep saying binders also contain, um, a download of all the mp3s performance and accompaniment so if you're a teacher that likes to use google slides you can embed things directly into your google slide if you have those binders you don't need them everything is on the website and the website really enhances what's in the teacher's guides but if you like a teacher's guide it is available and this is what it will look like so we at a glance tells you what there is um, and then all the songs are notated. There's teaching instructions, playing and creating ideas. There is the National Anthem of Canada and My Country Tis of These for our American friends, riding that New River train. And engine engine number nine, if, it, if there's a game, and there is a game in every week for K3. Um, 
a game or an action song, but definitely I make really good use of singing games in this program. The game directions are here. Those will also be in the song activities on the website. So again, you don't have to download and print this, but it may be helpful for you. And then creating activities with Chugga and Chew, and then there's teaching tips and extras in here as well. So that is essentially the Discover page. You can also explore content by all of these authors. And what's new is going to be at the bottom. So this is what's new in July. In August, that'll switch over and that'll be what's new in July. Looking at the song list, these are the music play grade levels. In general, is a lot of new extra wonderful songs. We've teamed up with John Jacobson and we have some really wonderful songs by John. And you can tell here the creator's picture is here. So A Million to One from Amazon Prime is here with John's picture. He's done pop song arrangements with choreography. We don't have permissions to give you the print, but I can teach those songs by rote and so can you. And you have the accompaniment track, which is wonderful. And you have the choreography videos, which are amazing. In the general song list, I can also search by topic. So if I'm looking for something for Halloween, I just type it in, boom, I have all kinds of songs. And we do have French for our French immersion teachers. <clears throat> um, I can add filters and I can search by rhythm tone set, all these different things. So if I'm looking to search by rhythm, oops, I didn't press, I didn't press enter. So I have to do that and then search. Now I close the filter and you can see all our songs that I use for teaching 16th notes. Red means grade three, <coughs> dark blue, grade four, green, grade five, and gray is, is um, grade six or middle school. So in the song list, so if I go to grade two, I have to take my filter off. If I go to grade two, song list, grade two, now I can see everything that's in the music play song list. This is everything that's in the original music play binders. And I can see at a glance the tone set of the song. I can see the rhythm of the song. I can see if it has an ORF arrangement. So if I am a well-trained orphan, ORF teacher, I will head for these songs. If I'm trained in Kodai and I want the sequencing, I can search by this. And if you are a Feyerabend type teacher, search by tone set in the filters and you can start with Do Re Mi instead of starting with So Mi. I'm going to go into the song engine, engine number nine. Here it is, number five, because it has an ORF arrangement and other things that I want to show you. So each song in the song list will have these elements. It'll have um, an audio track and it will have videos of the songs. So this is a nice new recording. I can tell because it's a pretty new graphic. It has a kid's demo that shows the kids how to play the song. Very helpful. Note and solfa highlights. If you teach solfege, great tool for you. Um, the supporting resources, these are slides. So this is a little icon that in, in indicates slide. I love the notation slides for the reading songs. I can pull it up and I have the reading song. If my grade twos have been with me since kindergarten, they will know how to read. Ti, ta, or do, day, do, day, do, day, do, whatever you use. And they will know how to read so and me. So I would teach that as a reading song. But if your kids aren't there yet, you can certainly teach it by rote. And then here's other concepts that we can derive from that song. The ORF arrangement is here. This is a very simple one. And that's the concept slide of the ORF arrangement. I'm going to go close it here. Um, I want the arrangement. These are the arrangements. So a very simple piano arrangement, ukulele guitar arrangement for every song in the song list. And if the key didn't work out really well, if it's something in five flats, and I know I couldn't possibly play that on a ukulele or guitar, we transpose it into an easier key. The ORF arrangement will be here that you can uh, download and print, and the ORF arrangement always has creating ideas for your students. 
Now over here is the interactive. So anything with this little link means it's a game or something you can interact with. So with the interactives, I can give a link to the students and you can see my code is embedded. So when the kids go to this, they will go right to where I am looking to use Engine Engine in my classroom. There we go. I'm going to log in as a student. My code is already there. Access some fun and I'm in. Um, this is a cute little note naming activity. And you can see here on all interactives, all videos, all games, there's add to my list. And I will show you how to do that. I'll create a list and then I'll add things to it. Um, that was a Solfa challenge. If you prefer to teach pitch letter names, it's here as well. There's a tone ladder so that if I want to have the kids sing the do to do scale and then take out the notes they're not using in the song, it gives them a better idea of why we're practicing so and me. We isolate the patterns and I can use that tone ladder. I really like the beat and rhythm activities. This is one of my favorite, favorite things on the website. Um, point to the beat is the first one. I have to move myself up. And the second one is interactive beat chart. This is to develop audiation in the students. We used to call this inner hearing. Audiation is the new term. So sing that out loud in your heads, out loud, out loud. And then I'll take more away and I'll keep taking away until the kids are only singing the first and the last songs and everything else is in their heads. And that really helps to develop that sense of steady beat. Um, I encourage the kids to clap the way the words go. In my Kodai teaching, rhythm in a melodic song is the way the words go. Rhythm is the way the words go. So engine, engine, number nine, we would clap that. Then there is a beat rhythm switch activity. When I click beat, I would have the kids step the beat to engine engine. When I click on rhythm, they clap the words. And this tells me they can differenti differentiate between beat, the steady pulse, and rhythm, the way the words go. Here's an assessment activity. If you're a strong teacher, you don't need this activity. You'll just do it on an instrument. Am I playing the beat or the rhythm? If you think it's the beat, tap your heart. If you think it's the rhythm, clap the words. And I would do that for several examples. I also divide the class up and have half the class play the beat on one instrument, the other half play the rhythm on the other. And I'll show you where you can download cards that you can do this with manipulatives instead of digitally. Here is my old Kodai felt boards, digitally version. Engine, two sounds on a beat. Engine, number nine. And then the next time we do it, we might do it with note names. And that's when I would label two sounds on a beat is TT and one sound on a beat is TA. Here is a creating activity. We saw it briefly in the ORF um, arrangement. We saw it briefly in the um, weekly lesson plan. Creating a word rhythm with chaga and chu. I'm only going to do eight beats. Chaga. Actually, I'm going to do this. Chaga, chaga, chu. Chew, chaga, chaga, chew, chew. I might sing engine, engine as the theme and then play as a B section. Or if I prefer, I can just do it with note values. Ta, ta, ti, ti, ta. Choose one way to play the titis and another way to play the ta's. Or you choose one way to play the top row and another the bottom. I am going to use shaker on the bottom row and I'm going to tap my stick for the top. Ta, ta, ti, ti, ta, ti, 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 ta. So creating activities, a big part of it. And again, I can add this to my list. Okay, so I was in song list. I was in grade two and I was looking at engine engine number number nine and we were looking at the interactive beat and rhythm activities. There's also a custom word rhythm generator. So if you wanted to engine train or if you wanted to do different words, you can add your own. Here are the printables. So what is in the Solfa Challenge interactive? 
will be here as a printed assessment activity. Interactive, printable. Tone ladder is not given here, although it is in the SOFA practice in Prepare SOFA. There's a printable tone ladder. The beaten rhythm activities are given here, beaten rhythm. And we've done this for every reading song in the program, right from pre-kindergarten on up to fifth grade. So first one is the beat pointing page. This one is following the audiation activity that we did second. The kids sing the song in their heads and they figure out what word falls on number 12. What word falls on number two? What beat does the word nine fall on? Where does railroad fall? Here is the rhythm pointing page. If you wish to do that, I actually don't. I really like this activity. This was a beginning notation set of manipulatives. I call it a song sort. So I go to the photocopier. There's two pages. And once I've copied them, I just go cut, 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 cut. And I've got a bunch of note cards that match the song, song sort cards. I'll give it to a group of kids and they'll recreate the rhythm of the song. A really good practice exercise, early grade two, late grade one. A very good teacher that I know sent me a video for Ikebaka where she had her kids do this song sort and then they chose rhythms to play on the song sort rhythms. Engine, engine number nine. And each group did it a little differently and it was a wonderful activity. Um, this is an assessment activity. There's assessments for all the beaten rhythm and you can use the SOLFA printables as assessments for the SOLFA. This is a two beat assessment. I like this one better early in grade two where they just write the sounds that they hear on a beat. Engine, two sounds, nine, one sound. There is no rests in there. Here is our chuck a -choo manipulatives. Instead of doing chuck a -choo with the interactive, I would use that to model for the students. And then I would copy and cut out these rhythm cards. And I put them in a CD package like this. So the kids take this out and they create a rhythm pattern with them. Choo, chug, choo, choo. And they would create eight beats with that and then decide how to play them. So there's the manipulatives for you. I think kids have lots of screen time doing manipulatives where they touch and they feel is really good for them. If they're ready, do the notes instead. They would know that and they can create their own uh, rhythm pattern with notes. And here's a printable version of this. I would use this if I was going to create a bulletin board to show my students work. So that's the only time I would do this actually that way. Other than that, my preferred method is to use the manipulatives and then there's is the train uh, one sound or two. So that is all just the beaten rhythm. I said I had the beaten rhythm cards for you to print. This is the same idea. I hold up the beat card, they step the beat, I hold up the rhythm card, they clap the words, but now I'm doing it with manipulatives instead of digitally. And I have a 16 beat beat chart. I like this because I can use it for every reading song. Instead of printing out a pointing page for Engine Engine and a pointing page for um, Lucy Lockett and a pointing page for Closet Key, I can use this for any 16 beat song. And I, I do exactly the same thing. Can you figure out what, what word falls on beat number 12? Good numbers practice for your littlest ones and generally just good practice for the kids. So that's the beat chart. Um, 16 beat charts, staff worksheets, and Ask Me pages. Ask Me pages are printables to send home with the kids so home knows what you're doing in school. And there's a little activity as well where they can draw a picture of it. Great sub activities. So there's piano, ukulele, or lyrics, there's printables, there's interactives, there's projectables. And we have done this for over a thousand songs on this website. It is really and truly amazing. Each song will have the song activities. These were also in the week um, week's lesson, but if you just want to quickly glance and review what's in that particular song, this is exactly what we what you saw in the week's lesson. And then the lyrics of the song are always given at the bottom. I find that handy if I'm searching for things by theme. I can look at the words and see, ah, does that reflect the theme that I want to teach? 
So that is the song list. It is a really powerful tool and search engine. And then the filters are really quite amazing. Next, I am going to my lists. So my lists, I can create two ways. One, I can create a list from scratch. And two, I can copy it. I'm trying to move myself down. I'm going to add a new list and I'm going to call it July 19th intro to music play online. E, there I added my list. So my list is made, but now what I have to do is I have to go around the site and decide what I'm going to put into that list. So I was already in the song list and I was in grade two and I was looking at engine number nine. So if I want to add the kids demo video to my list, I can add it to my list. And then I'm gonna select July 19th, add to the list. If I want to add the tone ladder to my list, I like that, I wanna use it in my lesson. Again, I just go July 19th, add to my list, close. Now when I go back to my lists, July 19th, has the kids demo and it has a tone ladder. So wherever I am on the website, I can add to this list. Now in the my lists, you can also create folders. So I have a folder here for grade two. Let's make another folder and we're going to call it July 19th demo. Okay, that didn't come up, why not? Oh, I have to click add it and I'm pictures covering it. So now I have it. And what I can do is I can put in this. I just have to click and drag it. And now when I select the July 19th demo, I have my list that I created for it. So that's creating a list from scratch. When I do a list from scratch or when I copy one of my learning modules, I can add as well new things. So I'm going to, let's see if I can hide this. I'm going to add a procedure. And this is where I can go to other websites and add things that I like. For example, if you like YouTube and there's something that you want on YouTube, I'm very fond of the line rider videos. And here's in the Hall of the Mountain King. I really like the URL and put it in here. And I'm going to call it Line Rider. And I'm going to put in the hall so I know what it is. And I have to make that a wee bit smaller so I can add it. There we go. It is now added. So now activity number three is line rider in the hall. And if I click on here, I go right to the activity and it even takes out the ads. I don't know if that always happens, but I like when it does. So we are still, I'm gonna make bigger again. So I've got everything I can see. That's the my list feature. Now I'm going to go to the learning modules. When COVID hit in March of 2020, our development team, put together the infrastructure to build a lesson a week for every single grade level. So if I go into grade two, you can see that I have August lessons. I have lessons for September, October. There is a lesson for every grade level for every week of the school year, including August, even though not every school is back until Labor Day and our Australian friends are in the middle of the school year at this point. So I'm going to look at September week one Actually, maybe I'll look at September week two. And what I can do is I can use this list as it is, or I can copy it to my list and make it my own. I can use this as the basis of my lesson planning, um, but then I can edit it. So I've got an outline. And as I had mentioned before, I like to have about 60 minutes worth of material here. So if you only teach for 30, you're not going to do everything. I have my I can statements for the week, and then we have an intro. Welcome to music 
welcome to music. I have some varieties of welcome to music, so you don't have to do the same exact song all year long. Here's a cute little lesson on beat is the pulse in the music. Do body percussion with the beat. It's a wonderful little play along activity. Here's engine engine number nine. Look at that. It's in September week two. And so I would have the kids read, read it as a reading song. And if not, if they're not reading it, then that's okay. I will teach it by rote. Here's the audio track. If you're an experienced teacher, you don't need to play the audio for them. You will just simply read it uh, from the notation. But on sore throat days, it's really nice to have it. So here is the interactive beat chart built into the lesson. And here's a Hill Hill song. This is a cute little chase game that the kids like as well. And here's the kids demo of how to play it. Here's poor little bug on the wall. That's a very cute little song. We squish the bug. Here's a demo of it in performance with one of our really fine music play teachers. If you're Canadian, sing O Canada. If you're American, sing My Country Tis of Thee. We'll have to get an Australian song for all our Australian teachers. Um, Susie and Phil have written one called We Are Australians. It's really lovely. And then the music time is over. So I could teach, if I walked into your classroom, I could teach from that lesson and I would feel 100% confident teaching it. In fact, I've done this. I've walked into classrooms and said, okay, let's pull up the lesson for the week for this grade and I go ahead and teach it. So I can copy it to my list and edit it and make it my own. So first thing I'm going to edit is the title because I don't need Denise's copy of in here. What I need is grade two, lesson two. And I might add when I'm doing this, if I'm in Australia, this might be March week one. If it's uh, somewhere else, it might be elsewhere. And again, I'm going to have to move myself down in order to save it. So now that is saved and I can change it. If I don't like Welcome to Music, I'm so tired of that. I have my own welcome song. Boom. It's in the trash. Um, if I like this lesson, I'll keep it. Body percussion, I'm going to keep. Um, I'm going to do Hill Hill instead of engine number nine. So I'm going to trash everything to do with engine number nine. And I'm only going to do Hill Hill. Um, whenever you see this little arrow within a lesson module, it opens up the song. And... Um, and you can you can have all the additional activities. I'm going to go back, and oh, it didn't save my didn't save my changes. Oh dear. Okay, so hill hill. Um, I can move things up or down. If I want to do poor little bug on the wall first, I can use the arrow key, and now it's moved up. So if I want to do that as my first song in the lesson, I can. Let's see, one more. So now number one is sing Poor Little Bug on the Wall. So I can make these lessons my own and then edit them. If, um, if there are bugs on the site, I'm not sure where the little bug is going to be. I think it's right here. Report a bug. So I, I noticed that the um, it, it didn't delete everything I expected it to. So I will just put report a bug or I send a quick email to support at musicplay.ca and then I report that problem. But I really do love this My Lists feature. I really do love the learning modules. Some of these are going to disappear. Um, Folk to Pop's gonna go, General's gonna go, Holidays, Jazz Lessons, Peter and the Wolf are gonna go. We're gonna leave storybooks and then I'm gonna put a whole set of movement um, lessons, movement My Lists in there. One for basically each grade level. So that if you want to save those for a sub, you want to save those for a game day, reward day for your kids, they'll all be in one place. The how to use um, module is going to stay because that's how you review how to use this website. It's big, it's complicated. When we first started, it was like a town of a thousand people. And now it's like a city of a hundred thousand people. You find your favorite restaurants, you find your favorite parks for the kids to play. And you don't always know every nook and cranny of the city. And that's how this website is. You're going to find surprises every day. It's like, it's like being on a treasure hunt.
So unit section, very, very complete. So we have a whole set of, uh, a whole unit with dance and movement songs, and they're wonderful. Then we have festivals and holidays. So Advent, um, a patriotic celebration, American song, back to school, Black History Month, Campfire Unit, Canada Day, Independence Day is further along. So you can go into any of these and there are wonderful activities for all of them. Um, for example, St. Patrick's Day, that's something you do. Here's an overview and there are related songs. There's extra resources where you get coloring pages. There's fun facts. Um, there's a lesson on John the Leprechaun, a lesson on Deedle Deedle Dumpling, if you don't talk about leprechauns in your school. Compose a melody about Ireland, or if you talk about leprechauns, compose a melody about leprechauns. Um, so there's lots of fun activities in, in every single, um, in every single festival and holiday. And we keep adding to this. We added uh, Holy with Manju Durai Rash, and we, we will continue to add. The listening units, I just love this section. And this section contains the composer series videos and Beethoven Lives Upstairs. Um, we were able to, two years ago, to get exclusive rights to these. So we have the full 50 length videos in English, French, and Spanish, and we have wonderful additional activities. So Box Fight for Freedom, there's a little mini book if you're doing it with your younger kids. There's an about, a video about Bach, a really short one. Um, the Box Fight for Freedom, like I say, it's about 50 minutes. If you're doing it with younger students, I used to do it with grade twos, and I would do it in 15 minute segments. So just take a note of how much you've watched, and then you can come back to it the next day. Um, we've got student worksheets. Level one would be for the younger kids. Level two, you could actually go right up and into middle school. One of the things I like after I've showed the 15 minutes, then I can go to the scene discussion questions and review. Because um, the movie, there's so much beautiful uh, scenes and content in it. Hard for people hard to remember everything that goes on. So scene description, this is the opening scene of the video. Discussion questions, and then suggested answers. Um, discussion question, what if I wanna be a stonemason? Do you think his parents approve? And then the answers. So it goes through the entire video and what you can do is show the 15 minute chunk and then discuss it. And if you want to do the printed things, you can do them. If you want to simply use the discussion questions, that's good too. But as I said, each one's in French and it's in Spanish as well. For our teachers that teach in um, Spanish schools, you've got six, seven hours of wonderful Spanish content here. If I go back to my units. I'm going to go back to my listening and I'm going to share Carnival of the Animals. I love this. We have lots of wonderful resources. Um, there is a mini book on there and I have to move myself up or down. So the mini book, you print it out and then you take it to the photocopier and you copy it double-sided and you set it with two left staples. And then all you have to do is cut it across on the paper cutter. And it, it makes a class set of mini books in about five minutes. It's wonderful. So. You could, if you wish, start with an overview of the composer, or you can go right into the movements. So a live animal video, kids are fascinated by animals, and it's a beautiful little video that they can do. Then there's um, a listening map and a kid's demo of how we do it. So all the movements of the Carnival of the Animals are here. We have some animated listening maps that are wonderful. We have live performances, again, the live animals, and then lots of additional materials. I love this Carnival of the Animals unit. And to go with it, I have written a storybook. And the storybook is called Carnival of the Animals. And you can see that at the top, there is poems, Here's the new poems. And I've introduced each of the animals in Carnival of the Animals with a poem. So the poem for the lions is, the lion is the king of beasts. A mighty king is he. He likes to sleep, but when he wakes, his subjects want to flee. 
quietly he creeps along, looking for his prey. If I see him coming, I'll be sure to run away. Quietly he creeps along, quietly he prowls, slinking through the grass until our mighty king growls. And we are going to put um, screens, uh, screens, slides with the poems at the beginning of each animal. We're busy with the um, conference right now, the virtual conference, so it hasn't gotten done, but it will go at the beginning. And so you can introduce the movement with a poem and then watch the live animal video, then move. Um, we have Peter and the Wolf also in here. So if I go to, let's see, History of Jazz, we've got JG and Friends, we've got a unit on opera, a unit on the Nutcracker with wonderful ideas for holiday performances. Um, the Peter and the Wolf is really good. And um, we've got a storybook as well for Peter and the Wolf. I'm going to go, oh, I didn't finish units. This is the listening units. The instruments in this is instruments of the orchestra. So instruments of the orchestra, whole unit with lots of activities, whole unit on unpitched instruments. We also have really good programs, especially since John Jacobson teamed up with us. My daughter did bunnies with her grade ones and twos this year. They were adorable. I got to see my granddaughter be a wolf. It was really cute. She loved it. And um, my daughter also did Starbucks with her grade threes and fours <clears throat> at Christmas time last year. And she laughed because she said she'd never gotten so many Starbucks gift cards ever in her teaching career. So these musicals are really, really well done. And all the components that you need for the musical are online. This is worth the subscription price just by itself. Here's the script. The teacher score has all the notation and the piano vocal scores, and <clears throat> there's a student score, and there's all the songs. We have concept slides, lyric slides, one slide lyrics when you're practicing all those words for the song. This is a handy tool to have. And then we have <clears throat> um, some links as well. So this is very cute. And all of John Jacobson's songs and musicals, almost all, have a lot of choreography with them. And John does the demos on the site. So it's it's fabulous. It's wonderful to have. Uh, we also have a unit by Kristen Luco. She's a teacher and I've been watching her for years on YouTube and she does basketball routines that are super fun. I am going to share uh, Grand Old Flag Stars and Stripes would be great for Veterans Day or Remembrance Day. <clears throat> but this is does routines with basketballs and then she does them at the opening of the basketball game, and the kids are amazing. I just love watching them. I learned two of these routines in an hour. They are not that hard to do. And then having the demo really helps for the kids to get a good of what they're doing. I love those. So our programs include um, big Dreams, Broadway Bound, Bunnies, just a wealth of materials for your performances. If I go to Theory, Theory is a little bit of a work in progress still. We have the staff lesson built out really well, great for the beginning of the school year, and we're working to fill out the other sections. Games and Centers is games like floor staff games where you need PDF instructions. We can't put that in our interactive game section. So we have that, we have four corners, and then we have centers. So we've got some very fun centers and adding more to this all the time. Our musical world is almost all from John Jacobson and he's done a lot of what he did when he had the Music Express magazine. So he does for each country, I'm gonna look at Australia. <clears throat> He does um, a video, a travelogue video that takes you over the country of Australia and talks a little bit about it. And then he's got a song. And if it's a, tr a traditional folk dance, he teaches the folk dance. Here's his teaching choreography. If it's a song, sometimes he's added his own choreography to it. So John is uh, really, really well traveled. And he's been to almost all of these countries. And he has 
nine siblings, and they have lived in many of these countries. So it's been really interesting talking to him about where he collected these songs from. I can keep going. Uganda is um, from a teacher in Uganda that I've made friends with on Facebook. So our musical world really is a very multicultural approach to teaching music. You certainly could use it for your entire musical world. The ORF unit really is our ORF directory where you can see all the ORF arrangements by tone set. So if you're looking for some specific tone set and an ORF arrangement, here's the place to look. Also, we have ORF teaching notes, my teaching notes, and Judy Sills teaching notes. We have ORF rules. We have um, beautiful posters and labels for your instruments so you can print them out. My goal is to have everything on this website that you need. Don't have to go buy anything extra. So if there's something you want, send in a request and we will see what we can do. The literacy unit is where you can find all the alphabet songs in one place in alphabetical order. They're sprinkled throughout Music Play Pre-K. And then we have some really good kindergarten spring literacy activities. These are more for the kindergarten classroom teacher than music teacher. And here's all the poems from Pre-K and from kindergarten are in here as well. So wealth of, there's a whole website just within any one of these units. I've seen websites that charge almost as much as we do for Music Play Online. And all they have is bucket drumming. We have everything and it's all for one amazingly low price. So our games section is next. The games are great. We have a wonderful game developer who has done Coconut Chaos. He's done the Note Toss videos, Space Music Adventure, the New Rhythm Ra Racer. Uh, and they're just wonderful games. If you do a reward day with your kids, what better way than to let them choose what games they want to play? And they're all really good. The ones here at the bottom are more for your littles. But as soon as we get up here, we're into ones that are fun for your older students and teach concepts more for your older students. I'm only going to show you one because there's too many. And the one I'm going to show you is Coconut Chaos. That's the home screen and we're going to start. And in this game, Walla and Monkey are on a tropical island. I have to name the notes or I get bonked on the head if I miss one or, um, okay, so I'll name it. And you saw that it said Largo first aid. So it starts slow, then it gets faster and faster. I've actually been to the end of this level and it's going really fast by the end. Now, if I don't name that note, it's going to bonk the monkey on the head. And if I name a note incorrectly, if I name a note incorrectly, I he gets whapped with the banana. I can add the games to my list. There is our July 19th, and it's now added to my list. So I'm going to escape that. I, I love all these games. They're all really, really good. We had some weak ones, and then our game developer created new versions of them that are amazing. Next, I'm going to listening kits. And the listening kits, one, two, three, four, five, were, are included with the teacher's guides for grades one, two, three, four, five. So this is the entire year's listening. So grade one is all going to be uh, here, but I can do all of the Carnival of the Animals and all of the Peter and the Wolf in the units. If I go to grade two, I still start with some basic sounds around us, what keeps the beat. But then I've got all these wonderful activities. And again, for each of them, so for example, for this chic, I open with a listening map. I, again, I know a really good teacher who started her classes, every music class of the whole year, with a listening map. So the kids would come in to the music, take their spaces in their assigned seating time. And she might pause and ask questions, or she might let it go right to the end. And then she'd discuss the questions. What instrument families did you hear? Well, I heard strings. Can you name some instruments? How fast? Is it quiet or loud? Smooth or separated? So listening logs are given for every song. There's a ribbon demo here that I really need to redo, um, but it's there and it shows how you can play with ribbons. After I do an activity like that with in my own classes, I always have the kids make up one 
and then I can assess whether they're responding to music accurately. So these are the listening resource kits that tie in with grades one, two, three, four, five. In the extras, um, Stuart Mannins from New Zealand gave us permission to put his SOMI storybooks online and they are beautiful, beautiful little storybooks. Um, they can be ordered as books from store.musicplay.ca, but you have everything on the website as video and they're beautiful because the little character in the story is named SOMI. So every time I come to the name in the song, we sing, so me, where are you? And I always pause it and have the kids sing back. And it's such a sneaky little way to get them doing more soulfish. They, uh, they've worked really well. I initially thought kindergarten for them, but I've used them K, one, two, and in some years, early three. And they're, they're very, they're just clever little stories. Now I'm going to the instruments section. And again, I've seen a website where you pay a hefty subscription for just bucket drumming. So we have uh, three sections of bucket drumming. The basics are my intro to bucket drumming, where I teach kids how to hold the mallets, how to play on the bucket. Then I have holiday ideas. And this came from 2020 and 2021, where kids couldn't sing. And so we were writing ideas like crazy for kids to perform holiday material without singing. And then we have Mr. Frank, and I love his materials. He has um, arranged a number of John Jacobson songs. He's arranged some pop songs. Um, I'm going to do everybody say yes. He has um, often got a K2 version for the younger kids and a grade three to five version for the older kids. I would say Mr. Frank and I are quite different as teachers. And I really like his approach. I think they actually combined will make kids better drummers. He's more of a performance drummer. I'm using it more like a band instrument. And that would be the difference. So we have the accompaniment tracks. We have a, a link to it in the song list. And his lessons are self-contained, which is lovely. This is six minutes and 32 seconds. You can sit back with the kids, drum with them. You can walk through the class helping whoever needs help, but Mr. Frank's on the screen and he's going to teach you. He actually calls himself Mr. Boom Boom, uh, but love his bucket drumming lessons. Then we have body percussion and the body percussion is primarily by Christian Mejia from Costa Rica. Christian went to Indonesia on a scholarship and he learned Indonesian style bucket drumming there. He has also delved into the world of um, African style body percussion and his lessons are wonderful. If I look at his basics, um, one, two, three, four, five, very suitable for your lower elementary from six and up, very engaging for your upper elementary. And when you get to his level two, I find it a challenge. So your sixes and your sevens and your eights, I would challenge them to learn it and not only to learn it, but to create their own body percussion patterns. In his uh, level two, he's done some body percussion to pop songs. Freedom Flag is Wave and Flag. So if your kids love the song Wave and Flag, I love that song. Um, they can do body percussion and do it to a pop song. And that would be a great project for middle schoolers. So body percussion, again, I don't know of any other website that has this many instrument methods available to you. Let's look at boom whackers. Um, your littles could do three note songs where there's not too much for them to do. Starting with third grade, I like to start with the five note songs. You know what I did? I left body percussion selected. I have to unselect. Now my boom whackers are here. So you can see I have all these songs that just use C, D, E, F, G, and then they vary, but it's still only five note songs. But a lot of C, D, E, F, G, and I find that really manageable for a third grade class to start with those five notes. So I'm going to start with intro to C, D, E, F, G, and I'm going to show you. I can make it full screen. And one of the things with this particular update is that I can go from this song, intro to C, D, E, F, G, song number one. So I would still do it unaccompanied first. And I can go to song number two just by clicking there and resume full screen. So now I have song number two 
here. If I select all resources, I can go from the kids notes to colored notation. And here is my colored boom whacker notation. I have a request into my team to put it back. So it's kids notes, colored, standard notation without switching. Um, and uh, we're in discussions about when that can happen because we're really, really busy right now. So I can escape from that. But I really do like our boom whackers. We have lots and lots of songs in each level. There's tons of material for you. And then we also have links to pop songs in the boom whacker section. So if I go back to boom whacker, here's pop songs. And these are going to be links. They're going to be external links. But we've got, a, we've leveled them. So that if you want something easy, you go here. And here's our easy. We've got Ladybird. We've got Banana Foam, Pirates of the Caribbean. Or you can go to more, more difficult ones if you want. So that's Boom Whackers. Uh, guitar and ukulele. We kind of do the same thing with both. So I'm going to just show you the ukulele. These are one, two, and three chords in C. There is some detuning ukulele around the world, um, but most of us do C. So you can see one chord songs. Row, 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 the G7 is optional. And all one chord songs until you get to number 16. So the kids can learn the chords with these one chord songs. They don't have to change. They are going to be really easy for them to do. And as soon as they've got that one chord learned, if we select pop songs, I now can play the lime and the coconut because it only uses C7. I can play Chain of Fools with C minor, Madeline Mary with only A minor. So this is a really engaging way. I've taught my kids to play jambalaya. I would have to say their favorite is Uptown Funk. Absolute all-time favorite. So we do that with ukulele. We do that with guitar as well. Teach the chords through folk songs. Lots of one chord songs first and then link to pop songs. Unpitched instruments. This started during COVID, but there's lots of fun materials for your non-pitched instruments, your rhythm sticks, your shakers, and we've got some creating activities in here as well. Holiday activities for unpitched, again, those came out of the COVID year, but no reason you can't use them still. Um, ORF, this is Bethany Ellen's materials. She is an amazing teacher. I've seen her teach in Australia. She's now teaching in British Columbia, and this week she's actually at the ORF Institute in Salzburg. So she's truly an amazing teacher. And her materials are really good and there's lots of video support. So she gives videos of how she would introduce it. So if you're new to the ORF process, her materials are very good. And then we have Holiday ORF and we're going to have a lot more of that because we have a writer named Jane Lamb. We just published her song Seasons and Holidays for ORF and Drums and we're putting all her materials on Music Play Online as well. And then we have virtual instruments. So instrument methods for almost everything that I can think you would use in an elementary school classroom. Now I'm going to go to the rhythm practice section. And in rhythm practice, you can see multiple levels. We have 25 levels, but once we've introduced three, four, and 3-4 gets introduced here at level, where is it? Must be um, level 11 is 3-4. Once we've introduced it, when we introduce 16, we do them in 4-4 four, four and in 3-4. Now, each of these levels has multiple activities. I'm going to go to Tati to rest because that one is the most complete. We have echo the rhythm, echo body percussion. You experienced teachers don't need this, but helpful for subs, helpful for young teachers. Poison rhythm, the kids just love it. So we've got lots of poison rhythm and we've got oops and scary. This poison symbol comes up in the scary and some teachers wrote to us that it was too scary for their kids. So we gave the option. We have animated play alongs. These are beautiful little pieces to play along with and they, they um, highlight as the kids play. There are lots of animated play-alongs on YouTube, but they're not sequenced. In our, in our um, rhythm 
section. There's animated rhythm play-alongs in every level, and they're sequenced so your kids will grow. They won't just play Taws and Titi's all year long. Flashcard play-alongs, they read an entire pattern, which is really good for the kids. These are not animated, so they're more of a challenge, and we have them with four beats and with eight beats. The rhythm reading assessment came out of my time in a grade three residency. I really wanted to assess how well the kids were doing with what we had done. And so I lined them up in class list order, and then I had them do the rhythm reading assessment. But I had to go back and forth with the flashcard videos um, and restart it, where with the rhythm reading assessment videos, there's 25 patterns. So it just keeps going. I could go through a whole class for minutes. Ta, ti, ti, sh. Ta. And now my next student will read. Ta, sh, ta, ta. My next student, it won't say ready, go, it'll just clap. Ta, sh. So we've done it that way, and I really like the video for myself. But we had some teachers say that they were perhaps um, had a few kids with anxiety. So we made it into a slideshow version as well. So you can do it and click through the slides as you wish. Here's an 8-beat rhythm, uh, rhythm reading assessment. If your kids really are struggling beyond Ton Titi, challenge your older students by doing more beats, by doing 8-beats. Listen, clap, and say they hear. And they would say, ta, ti, ti, ta, ta, or do, do, de, do, do. The top ones, I will say the ta, ti, ti, ta, ta answer. The bottom ones, there's no syllables. So if you use other counting systems, use those ones. And then there's rhythm dictation, and there's a four corners game. And we've done this again for every level of rhythm. It's fun. I might have the kids clap the rhythm of each corner, and now they go. So hopefully by now they're all in their corner and they play the rhythm. And that one I am covering up. It would be number four, and corner four sits down. Then we go on to the next and play it again. So fun game, fun game, great review. Solfa practice has much the same elements as rhythm practice. So if I look at So and Me, we have the echo sing. But here we have lovely Maya demonstrating the hand signs and the flashcards are nice and big. And we have talking pets, which are adorable. I want to find one of those super cute ones. Um, the owl is one of my favorites. So the owl will sing and the kids echo. And the kids would echo there, isn't that sweet? Just love those. And we've done the echo videos in separate keys. So all the C major, if you teach fixed do, which I don't recommend, but if you do, use all the C major ones. Um, if you teach movable do as I do, you would do C major, then you do D major, then you do F major, and then you'd mix them. Then we have poison melody, which is as big a hit as a poison rhythm. Um, reading hand signs. This is one way of doing flashcards. Reading notation. Listen and sing. They would hear, mm, 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 and they'd sing back, so, so, me, and then rhythm dictation. So that is the solfa practice section. And we have just recorded many, many, many um, additional patterns. So you can see now we are uh, extending the solfa to many levels. We've really added a lot. Vocal warm-ups is exactly that. We've got Bobo. Bobo is my little tennis ball. Bobo. And the kids echo. So you can make your own or you can use our Bobo videos. They're very cute and there's more on the way. Yoga for voice is for you, the teacher. This is to keep your voice healthy. Um, this is David Wilson's videos. I have to say, I pretty much lost my voice for about two years. I had a bad surgery and some bad muscle misuse, and he has given me eight private lessons. I still have two to go, and I'm going to have to practice for 10 years, but I'm getting my voice back. If you have a healthy voice now and you do his yoga every day, 
you will keep your healthy voice. Vocalese is just that. There's some bobos, there's some other activities. Uh, some of these were done by Lisa Ward, some of these were done by Jen Forsland. They're all wonderful. And then we have some actual warm ups. And so here's the complete vocal warm ups. If you want to use them as a slideshow, you can just go through and you can click through. And they're all notated and you can use those. The next uh, and the last section is the toolbox. And the toolbox is where we have our composition tools. So there's a rhythm composition tool. Again, choose your level. This is your littles, your grade ones. This is your grade sixes or sevens or eights when they do six, eight. So I'm going to go into, I'll just go into level two. And I add a rhythm. T, 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 T. Uh, let's see. Ta, ta, T, T, ta, ta, sh, ta. Sh, ta, 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 sh. Then I can play it back and I can pick the instrument I want to play it back on. Let's play it back on a piano. Here we go. And the melody composition is a little, it's a small tool. It's not terribly complicated. With this one, I move myself way up high. In this one, I choose my rhythm first. So I'm going to use ta and tt, and I don't have to. I can go to other, other areas. And then I'm going to enter it. So let's see here. You know what? I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm going to go to sew and me. There we go. And I'm going to choose, I've got it too big. I can't see it right. I can't see everything right now. So I'm going to go enter an E. And a rest. And then I can play that one. and decide if I like it. If not, restart. And let's start on the G this time. I don't want it to start on a rest. Back, back. I want it to start on a T, T. T, 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 T. And I'm going to change to a Ta. And I'm going to go back to T, T. And I want, I want a Ta to end with. I haven't done that for a while. And again, these things can all be added to my list. So I can add it to my lesson. Or I can give the kids a link to this and they will do it. If I want to create a QR code, I just go here and create QR code. This is how Chrome does it. If you use a different browser, I, I can't help you. I don't know how to do that. So I am going to go back. Oops. You don't want to see the back side of the website. You want to see the front. Um, the toolbox also has some really good concept practice. So tap the beat, types of voices lesson, instrument family sort, classroom instrument sort, dynamics. And I'm truly in love with the Tempo Interactive. This one is one of my favorite activities on the site. Um, multiple levels. I can start with the littles or I can go to the, the challenge. Let's just look at five, four meter. So I'm going to click a tempo button so I can do it. I'll do it moderato and we'll play along. It's great. And then if I want to, I can do it presto. So this is an excellent, excellent toolbox full of things you can use. The documents is exactly that. If I want to look for posters on the website and see what I can download and print for my classroom, I can do that. I have all the alphabet posters. If I teach alphabet to pre-K or Ks, I can download them all. I'm going to look for tempo. And here I have tempo posters and I'm pretty sure these are the ones that are in the tempo interactive tool. I have them here. I love these posters. I think they are absolutely wonderful. So document searching is a really nice feature. If I'm looking for a worksheet, I want to uh, assess something on dynamics. 
worksheets, search dynamics, and boom, I have all kinds of dynamics worksheets that I can look for. Eventually, we're gonna have the theory unit built out completely with, um, we're actually doing some really nice videos and interactives to support you in that. The last section is the lesson planning section. If you remember back to the beginning, we have a lot of the lesson planning materials on the Discover page, but here you're going to have music advocacy posters, our equity and diversity statement, some of the songs we've, we've removed from the site, why we've removed them. Music in the Inclusive Classroom talks about how to um, better teach your special needs or neurodivergent students. Um, we have the scope and sequence, the subplans, those were on the Discover page as well. The highlights were on the Discover page as well. And then we have curriculum correlations. We haven't got every state up, but these are, uh, you can view all and see more. If I look in lesson plans by grade, it's going to check. We have model lessons for pre-K. So I've done a model lesson for all 36 weeks of pre-K. So if you're scared to death of teaching the littles, this is 31 minutes of me teaching four-year-olds in a daycare setting. And we've got one that's a school setting and one that's a Montessori school setting. So I love these, um, these demo lessons. They're, they're great. They kept me really honest when we developed the pre-K curriculum because if something didn't work, we didn't use it. So that is Music Play Online. I hope you will enjoy the website and appreciate this wealth of materials that you get for such a very, very reasonable, nominal subscription price. It's um, currently $175 a year. January 1st, 2024, it's going to go up to $200 a year, which is still a fraction of the, the value that's, that's on this site. Thank you so much. I'm Denise Gagne. I really appreciate you uh, spending this time with me today.